Hey guys, in this video we're covering the Array modifier. Quick reminder, this lesson is from our complete Intro to Blender course that we're offering for free for a limited time on YouTube. If you're new here, I'd recommend starting at the beginning of the course. I've added a link in the description. Alright, go ahead and open up Blender and let's jump right in. To begin this lesson, let's start a new file. So go up to your file menu and pick the option for New, General. You don't need to save any file that you were working on. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about the array modifier. First, let's give ourselves something interesting before we use the array modifier. So near your default cube here, press S for the scale tool, then press Z to lock the Z direction. And let's scale it down so it's a little thinner, something like I have there, and click. Then move your cursor just off to the left side, press S, and then press Y to lock the Y direction. And let's scale it in like so and click. Then roll your mouse wheel forward a bit. And we have a new looking object from the default cube here. Now, before you use modifiers in general, it's a best practice that if you've transformed your object in any way, that you would want to apply those transformations. If you don't apply those transformations, the modifier might work in an unexpected way, kind of warping your geometry in ways that you didn't think it would. So remember to apply those scale transforms with that object selected, hold down the control key and press A for the apply menu. And while you could choose just scale here, in general, I wanna make sure just in case I did anything, I know I didn't move it and I know I didn't rotate it, but in general, I tend to pick all transforms by habit just to make sure I apply all of them. So go ahead and click on that. Okay, so those transformations have been applied and things have essentially been zeroed out back to where the modifiers should work properly. Okay, I mentioned that we we're gonna talk about the array modifier. So let's go over to the right hand side where there's a wrench there, click on it for modifier properties. Then where it says add modifier, go ahead and click to drop down that menu. And in the generate column, the first one here says array, go ahead and click array. Then roll your mouse wheel back to zoom out a bit. And at first it seems like this made this longer, but I don't see that it necessarily made any copies. Let's figure out what's going on here. So I'll zoom out just a little bit more. Some view like I have here on my screen will be helpful. Over in the array modifier, down where it says factor X, go ahead and click on that right arrow a couple times and you'll see that you indeed have two copies and there was just no space between them before, which made it look like it was one object that was longer. So over here in your array modifier, it says count two. So we have two copies total. And in factor X, it's a 1.3 factor in the X direction. So whatever the size of the shape you're working with, it's adding a 0.3 times that space here in between the two. So the array modifier is great for adding multiple copies. So go over to the count and you can either click and hold down and drag to the right on that menu. Or if it's a little too touchy, you can click on the arrows, the left and right arrows, and you see that you're adding or subtracting from the total count. It's also great for making sure those things are spaced evenly. So that factor X, you can click to the left arrow and it will shorten the distance between each of them dynamically or press the right arrow and it will lengthen the distance. Now, in this case, I don't like the direction this is going. I actually want to turn this into something that looks more like a series of stairs or steps. So let's figure out how to do that. Hey everyone, we're doing something a little unconventional here. And for a limited time, we're giving you access to one of our paid courses for free right here on YouTube. And this lesson is a part of it. Blender is a beast of a program to learn, but with the right approach, it doesn't have to be. That's why we created Blender Academy, to help people build the Blender skills they need and then go out and get the jobs they want. We hope you find these lessons to be a good investment of your time. If you do, and you're serious about learning Blender, head over to our website and continue learning with us. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And now, back to the lesson. For factor X, let's go ahead and set that to zero. So click on it and press the number zero on your keyboard and press enter. And you have zeroed the factor X. Now for factor Y, let's go ahead and click on this and type 1.1 and press enter. And now those copies are going in that direction. Let's also increase the count to 10. So click that right arrow till we get up to 10. 
And if we scroll our mouse wheel forward to zoom in, hold down shift to orbit a bit and get a view like this, they're going in this direction, but I said I want them to be stair-like. So you can have multiple factors here. So it can be in multiple directions that you're adjusting these factors. So let's go down to the Z and let's start clicking on the right arrow. And we see that the more we click on that right arrow, these are ramping up into something that would be more like steps. I'll settle on a factor of two for right now. So while the array modifier is great for making multiple copies quickly and kind of arranging the count and the factor of how they're spaced out in the X, Y, and Z directions, another thing that's great is because we have a non-destructive modifier here, we still have access to the underlying geometry for the original step in case we want to change something about it. So let's try that. Press tab on your keyboard to switch to edit mode and click once in space to deselect everything. And let's say that we wanted this step to be just a little more thick. So I'm gonna scroll forward to zoom in on this step. Press three on the top row of numbers to switch to face selection and click once on this top face. And then so that we can see what's about to happen, I'll zoom back out a bit. Just wanted to make sure we could easily select that face. I wanna be able to see the whole set of steps now. Then press G on your keyboard for the move tool and press Z to lock the blue direction and begin to move this up and something kind of strange is happening. So if you look at just the step you're editing, it's doing what we would want. It's actually changing this in the Z direction. So moving this face and the shape is adjusting. But you notice that the rest of the steps in our staircase here are changing the way they're kind of oriented, maybe in a way that you wouldn't want. Now there are times where when you use the array modifier, this will be a handy thing for certain types of things, but it's not for this particular example. So I'll hit the escape key here on my keyboard and press tab to go back to object mode. So what's going on here? Well, if you come over to the right hand side, you'll notice that it says relative offset here. And so relative just means that it's a multiplier on aspects of where the geometry is in space. And so when we move the position of that face up, in order for it to maintain the space between the top of that face and the next object in the array, it's having to adjust. And because this is getting thicker, this is moving up in space and then this is moving up and so on. And that's why we're getting that chain reaction there. But if you're working on something like this and you just wanted to make the step a little bit more thick, but you wanted to maintain everything else about how this was working, you can switch to a constant offset. So uncheck relative offset, it'll seem like everything is gone, and check on constant offset over here. And everything seems to be broken, but let's not worry about what's happening on the screen. Just click on this little right arrow next to constant offset to twirl it down. And now you notice that instead of being by a factor, we are now doing things by measurement. We never made a step that was totally to scale here. And so we're not going to be working with real world units here, but we are working in the metric system. So we'll just go ahead and where it says distance X, let's change that to zero. So click once on it, type zero and press enter. Then where it says Y, let's go ahead and click on the zero and type 1.1 and press enter. And you see now that that's what 1.1 meters looks like. Let's go ahead and dial that down now. Click, hold down, and drag to the left a little bit until it's something a bit closer. I'm around 0.75 or so. Then for the Z, let's go ahead and click and drag to the right until that comes up to something that looks interesting. I'm at about 0.4. Of course, you could change these. There's no right or wrong answer here. Now let's see what happens if we go back to edit the thickness of this step. So back over here, let's press tab to switch to edit mode. That face is probably still selected, but go ahead and click once to select it. Then press G for grab, press Z for the Z direction, and go ahead and give that some thickness and then click. And notice that now it didn't mess everything up because those are locked in real world units. So there's a certain amount of space between them and a certain amount of lift up off the ground. And it doesn't really matter how you change the object because it's not a relative offset, it's a constant offset. Let's go ahead and press tab to switch back to object mode. So there will be times where one will work better than the other. Now here's another thing that you'll want to play with, and that's fit type. 
So right now we've been using a fixed count. Go ahead and click on the drop down arrow here and let's try fit length. Go ahead and click on that. And at first everything seems to go away, but you see that the length now, so instead of it saying count here, it says length and we see zero. So go ahead and click and hold down and drag your mouse to the right and notice that as you give it a longer and longer length, I'm up to eight meters here, it fills in objects until it hits the limit of eight meters. So it's basically saying for up to a length of eight meters, respecting these distances here in the X, Y, and Z direction, I'll fit as many of these as I can until I hit that limit. So if you have some sort of array that needs to go a certain amount of distance, and now you're just trying to figure out how many you would fit in there, you could use the fit length, set the length, and then set the distances here, and Blender will do the rest of the work for you. On the other hand, if you know you just need a total number, then you would switch this back to fixed count, and then you would dial the count based on the total number you needed, and then just deal in the end with whatever that meant for the total distance. Now there is another option here that we're not gonna talk about. I'll flip down the menu. There's fit curve. That's a little bit more advanced. We're not gonna cover that just yet. So let's go ahead and settle on fixed count for now. Another thing to know about the array modifier, go ahead and click on this little arrow to the left of it to twirl up the options so you don't see them all. And let's add a second array modifier. Now, before we add this, try to think to yourself what this might do. Click on add modifier and then go over and click array. And again, it seems like it lengthened it, but we should know by now that this must have something to do with the offset here. So let's go ahead, we'll leave it at relative for this one. And under factor X, let's go ahead and click on the right arrow to give it a little space there. So what it's doing is it's taking the first array, which is being applied first, and that's sending this object up this way. And it's now saying, okay, given that array, now let's apply the second array to that. So that's why we're getting the first array is now copied twice. Let's go ahead and make a couple more. So where it says count, let's click and go up to about five and I'll scroll my mouse wheel back so I can see them all. So if you wanted to quickly create some sort of stairs, maybe in some sort of stadium, then you might create an array for the ones that go up and then another array for the ones that go across like this. And of course you could continue to adjust either the distance here of this second array. And you can also go back to the first array, twirl that one down and say to yourself, you know, I decided that I actually want a couple more steps. So you could increase that count up to 10, for example. So the array modifier is really powerful for creating multiple things. Note that we still only have one object here. So if we ever wanna go back and edit that object, we're only editing one here. Now, if we needed access to be able to edit, say there's a single step that needs to be skinnier or we need to remove something somewhere altogether, the only way to do that would be to apply the array and then go make the edits by hand. So in general with most modifiers, and this is true with the array modifier, you wanna leave it as a modifier for as long as possible, maybe even all the way to the end of your project. But if there is a moment where you realize, I don't think I'm gonna adjust this array anymore and I do need access to the underlying geometry, then remember that while you're in object mode, which we are here, you can go over to the array that you wanna apply, go ahead and click the drop down menu and click apply. And let's just apply both of them. So next to this array, go ahead and click on that right arrow for the drop down menu and click apply. And now if you press tab to go into object edit mode, it turns out that this is all one big object. You can click once in space. And now you could click on this face to select it and press G for grab and Z for the Z direction. And notice you're changing it only all by itself. Go ahead and click to set that down. Now at this point, everything is a destructive edit. So you can't go back and adjust things about the arrays any longer, and you can't go back and adjust anything about a single step and have it happen to all of them. All right, as with most modifiers, there's more that you can do with the array modifier, but we're sticking to the upfront fundamental basics, the popular things that you'll need to do. And when we get to much, much more tricky examples, we'll definitely point out some of the more advanced features.
But for now, you know enough to use the array modifier on some of your projects, and you're ready to move on to the next lesson where we'll cover another modifier. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson. Did you find this video to be helpful? Let us know by giving it a like. If you're ready for the next lesson, you can find it in this playlist. And if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you build the skills you need, head over to blenderacademy.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy blending. Thank <laughs> you.